Good morning, and welcome to episode one of Riddick's Guild of Thrones Strategy Guide. This episode will cover getting started as a fresh brand new player and the strategies that I would use uh, to optimize my experience when within the Gas Hero game. Now, for those who are new to Gas Hero uh, or those who are unaware of the Guild of Thrones program, uh, it was a program implemented by the team that uh, basically recruited uh, the top Web3 streamers and the top Web3 guilds in uh, Gas Hero and provided them with in-game assets to help produce uh, knowledgeable content uh, as we continue to scale and grow. Now, the program includes 30 common heroes, six common weapons, and six pets, which uh, we will kind of cover as we go into the guide, uh, for a duration of 32 days starting February 4th. Now, the details of this program uh, are, are basically open to interpretation of how these uh, guilds that were selected and users that were selected, uh, they have free reign to do as they like with these assets. So they can uh, add additional resources to their game, whether that be in the form of GMT or additional heroes from the marketplace. They can choose to keep all of these assets in one account or spread them out over multiple. Uh, it, it really completely is up to the user themselves. For the purpose of this strategy guide, I would like to keep this account as pure as possible because I believe that it is a great starting point for any mid-tier player looking to jump into the Gas Hero game. Um, and we'll go into uh, roughly why. So uh, when you first uh, set up your account, you will get four heroes issued for free with a very minimal lifespan. Uh, those heroes will have a weapon and a pet, uh, which will allow you to complete the introductory tutorial. Now, after I think it's two or three days, uh, those heroes will expire and be of no use to you. And this is where it kind of gives you the, uh, the little bit of a taste of the game before uh, you know, deciding to jump in or not, which I think is is great for uh, Web3 to be able to uh, provide. Now, the heroes that we received uh, from the team for the Guild of Thrones program, uh, they, were, they were bought from the marketplace. We see a, a variance of uh, different NFTs, and we see a variance of different levels ranging from level 1 to level 10. Now, the composition of our lineup is going to consist of six heroes. Uh, and, and there are so many different play styles that uh, it's really up to the individual and what they're really looking to achieve, whether they're looking to focus on key leadership roles, which will have a strong single target focus, whether they're looking just to farm resources, which will have you know, a, a, a very highly weighted uh, uh, AOE, I call it, area of effect uh, type of damage where it damages all enemies at once. Or if you're going straight for the, the player versus player, which there's uh, usually a good combination of everything seems to perform well. Now, as we are a month in, we have seen that uh, there have been many resources and many guides that have been set up. And uh, we're starting to see the, the highly powerful teams utilizing you know, their, uh, their heroes. And we're starting to see the tiers of heroes being set. Um, I have gone ahead and, uh, let me bring this up here. Um, this is a, a great tier guide and this is just in, um, just in my opinion, obviously everyone is going to kind of weight these heroes differently, uh, based on their efficacy and what they're trying to achieve. So we've got our S tier. These heroes are currently overperforming, and we see them pretty commonly in the higher edge performing groups. Uh, we've got our A tiers. Uh, the blue is going to be your tanks. Uh, the red is going to be uh, your damage, and the green is going to be more of your utility based characters. Um, and we see those kind of ranging down again, just in how they're performing at the higher levels. Again, they all seem to do fairly well, especially at the uh, the common level. But as you do get higher, there is a meta that really starts to stand out. 
Um, with that being said, I have gone through all of the heroes we I have received for this program, and I've got them in a spreadsheet uh, assigned specifically to the uh, tier of uh, kind of where they fit in for the strategy that I am looking, and highlighted a few of the heroes that uh, we are going to use. So jumping back in, uh, the heroes that we're going to focus on, I guess the primary goal for anyone just getting started is obviously to set your heroes up uh, and equip them with the weapons that best suit uh, uh, your gameplay style. So uh, for this guide, my style is going to be focus focusing on uh, replication, 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 which breaking that down means my goal is going to be to replicate a second set of six heroes as quickly as I possibly can, because the longer that we have heroes, the longer we have a team, the longer that we can continue uh, playing gas hero in everything that it has. And then secondarily, our goal is to continue our growth. Uh, this game is essentially, it, it's a game of survival. Uh, people are going to focus on trying to achieve their ROI as quickly as possible. There are going to be others that uh, realize that the, the longer that we can maintain our teams, uh, the longer that we can continue to earn and participate and, and jump into the PvP and explore all aspects of the game. So that, that's kind of where my uh, methodology and my strategy leads is longevity. Uh, so with that being said, our common heroes, we get a 20-day lifespan. The uncommon heroes get a 30-day lifespan, and our rares get a 40-day lifespan. Now, given that all of the heroes in the program are all commons, we have 20 days to be able to repl replicate our team as quickly as possible. And with that being said, uh, we do have a number of heroes that uh, have already been provided at level 10 or above. So that's going to be a great time saver uh, for us as our initial uh, location is going to be farming farming experience potions, uh, which will be used to level up these heroes. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically go back and set our official lineup that we will uh, be using for the first 20 days of this program. Now, keep in mind, you can have multiple heroes within your account. Their time and lifespan will not start ticking down until you equip them. Uh, once they're equipped, their lifespan starts ticking down. It does not matter if you remove them or not, and you will get a warning sign there. So uh, first, we're going to jump into the Bio Robotic Soldier, uh, which is already a level 10 and a tank. Uh, ideally, for my strategy uh, in this guide, we will have two tanks which will sit in the front line. So the second one we will here use here is the Blessed Kid. Uh, we will also have two uh, AoE or multiple damage uh, DPS. So we're going to use the Altruistic Banker and then we're going to use uh, the little bulldozer. Uh, both of these uh, NFTs do an AOE type damage, damaging all uh, enemies periodically. Now, for our healers or our utility, I am going to go with Faith Healer and Truth Seeker. Both of these are single target healers and are both very effective in uh, basically spot target healing. So the longer that we can keep our tanks up and the longer that we can keep our DPS up, the more damage that is going to be done over uh, the period of the fight. So I think that uh, for me, this is going to be our first 20 day setup. So we're going to save this. Now you will get a prompt that uh, will ask you to uh, confirm, and this is the binding. Once you type in yes and click send, or bind, sorry, your lifespan will start ticking down. So now that we have those bound, their lifespans have started. Now, we were also issued equipment, which I forgot to uh, lock into the game, so we're just going to quickly lock these so they become available to use. All right. Now, while they're uh, they're locking, we're just going to jump in. 
uh, and have a look at the secondary. Uh, this, this comes to applying to weapons. So if we're looking at our heroes and we scroll down on the third skill set that we're able to see, um, you'll see a weapon mastery. So for this specific uh, hero, they have a sword mastery. Uh, all of these are, are skills that, that will matter in the long run once you start to take uh, PvP kind of more seriously. Or uh, maybe just the first one to focus on. So uh, for this one, for unlocking, uh, the hero's defense is increased by 20%. Is a uh, you know something that can potentially come in handy even at the common levels. Now, in order to unlock these, uh, these, these skill trees, which we will cover later on, uh, you just have to burn uh, or recycle a hero. You'll be issued skill tree points associated with uh, the type of uh, uh, hero that they are. So this is a, um, uh, a technocrat. So by, by recycling this hero, I would get uh, X amount of points. Uh, I believe it's seven for the commons to put into my skill trees. So let's just see. Yes, our weapons are unlocked. So for our tanks, the two weapons of choice are typically the dagger and the sword. These are melee weapons, and they have no range. So if they're placed in the second row, they won't be able to participate in the battle until they move forward. So we're going to equip both of our tanks with a sword each. Again, with the common heroes for the 20 days, we're not too worried about the, uh, the weapon type. Um, but as you do progress further in the game, the weapon type becomes more... Um, more uh, kind of weighted. Okay, so both of our uh, tanks are now equipped. Now, I'll just uh, make sure I've locked our pets because we will be covering those shortly. Okay, back to our heroes. Now, the second and third row require ranged weapons. Uh, for the second row, there is a weapon class uh, that is available that um, the mace and the axe, which basically only work from the second row and the first row and does not work for the third row. So always be careful with the weapons that you're equipping and making sure that the heroes are able to attack with the range that you are needing them to do. So as we look through, so we can see there's a gun mastery for the little bulldozer. We can see that there's a staff mastery for our truth seeker. And we can see the same for the faith healer and a bow for the altruistic banker. So if we're having a look at our weapons, obviously we don't have those, uh, which is completely fine. So uh, we're just going to equip them with what comes in. So we've got one staff, which we're going to equip to our faith healer. We're going to give a gun to, let's give her the mace. And we'll give a gun left to the final two heroes. Again, the weapons are important, but more so just for, for kind of your uncommons and your rare uh, lineups. Um, these, these basically will do, and as you can see, the warning signs that were there prior are now gone, meaning all of these heroes are able to attack. Um, now, the the weapons, basically, they just increase the, the damage done. It is important to note that uh, the heroes, um, their, their damage output will be at 100% if the weapon is of the same rarity. If you get to a place, for example, like having an uncommon hero with a common weapon, uh, it will only do a lesser percentage uh, damage done. So you actually get penalized for that. So uh, on the other end, we now get uh, uh, pets. Now these are eggs. They eventually can unhatch when evolving them and uh, increasing in rarity. You can see uh, that each of them has uh, different things. So the baby Trent adds defense. So we're going to put that into our tank. Um, we also have a critical strike, which I think is going to be really good for our altruistic banker. Uh, we have speed and range for the crab. So we're going to put those uh, back here.
which leaves two baby pandas unhatched for our other tank. And our truth seeker. Now, it is also important to note when you're looking at the uncommon and higher uh, rarities that you will have a companion bonus. So um, by holding them, you can increase your percentage. But again, that, that really comes in handy more along the rare um, the rare based uh, gameplay. All right, so now we have our pets equipped. We have our weapons equipped. We are ready to complete the final challenge. I've already completed one, two, three, four, five, and six with the free uh, heroes that were provided. So we are going to enter here to complete our very first battle as a team. Now you'll be able to see uh, kind of the the heroes, uh, the enemies dying periodically, just as those uh, multi-target DPS start doing their uh, jobs, and then the spot target healers um, also making sure everyone is staying topped up. Now. The first seven levels, you'll get one experience potion. I typically don't spend those on the uh, heroes that are provided for free because they have such a short lifespan. I kind of think they are a little bit wasted. Now, we are now ready to select where we want to settle down to choose our clan, our guild, our district, and our um, city. Now, there are two frames of thought for people looking to enter the game. And those frames of thought are going to be along the lines of uh, whether you want to access the auction house uh, goods, which typically is aligned with higher population guilds. The higher the population, the stronger the population of its users, uh, the more slots are open in those auction house uh, settings. Now, that also means a lot more competition. Uh, I prefer to opt for the lower population uh, on this sort of a uh, strategy guide because it means I have more potential at leadership positions, which uh, do provide a source of revenue uh, from taxes and fees from the marketplace of all of the members in your guild, your clan, your district, and your city. Um, now, you can automatically assign if you're not sure where to go, but I have done a little bit of scouting, and I think for the purpose of um this guide i am going to enter taipei in district two and I, I the guilds are all pretty much the same so let's say i like the number four and four uh there we go confirm and we are going to settle down in taipei district two guild four clan four here we are we have arrived there's only one other user in this base um with a relative strength of 21. So this means uh, you'll see this little red dot here on clan boss that unlocks uh, once every couple of days. And the person with the highest ranking ends up becoming the clan boss in a position of leadership. Now, given that my strength so far is sitting at 76, that positions me fairly well for an almost immediate uh, uh, clan ranking, which ends in 13 hours. Uh, we have it uh, in-game mail. So, again, revisiting, we have six heroes, all of level 10. Our goal is to increase that to level 20 per. We have 39 energy at five energy spend per location that we go to. We have the gas can mine, which uh, are used to upgrade your base construction vehicles as well as in breeding. We have the uh, battlefield sites, which we can find weapon uh, shards to basically create weapons, 100 shards equals one weapon. We have the zoo, which we can collect pet shards to breed new pets and evolve. And we have the AI factory, which is going to be uh, for our experience potions and leveling up. We have different levels of difficulty that as we scale our team and get better and better and better, have higher rewards, and it gives us a little bit of an insight of the strength requirements for each. So if we're looking at easy, we are currently at 76. So we are able to participate in level five as it stands right now. Now, sometimes that does not mean you will win. It all depends on your lineup and the quality of your heroes and the weapons and the pets that are equipped. Um, but it gives a good baseline. Now, if we want to test, we can click enter 
and there's a great simulation button here that you could utilize that will give you a preview of how your team will perform in that select level uh, without deducting any energy, but you also will not get rewards. So let's see how we do in the AI Factory Easy 5. Now, below each hero, you'll see a little green bar here. That green bar is their, uh, their rage, that when they hit that, they get special abilities, whether it's um, basically increasing their damage done um, or uh, the speed at which they're able to do in using their abilities. So by easy five at our current levels 10, we're currently not strong enough to be able to defeat this. So we may have to drop back a few levels just while we're gaining some experience potions. But that is the great thing about the simulation is you're able to easily um, kind of uh, test before you enter the waters. Let's give number four a go. Now, judging by uh, the results here, it's, it's, it's fairly evident that we need to increase the level of our damage dealers uh, primarily um, and potentially our tanks to be able to survive a little bit uh, longer. So the healers seem to be uh, doing okay. And this battle seems to be a little bit more balanced, but uh, I think as the tank goes down, the enemy team will take over so we'll drop back to easy three and get our uh, get our heroes to the appropriate levels and build up from there all right so We've done the uh, the simulate. It's completely fine. Uh, so we can jump straight into that uh, for our first official energy burn. Now, what we should have done, uh, or what I should have done, is uh, applied the seven free experience potions prior to, which would have made a difference um, and, and possibly led us to that number four, but we'll see uh, how we go after this battle here. And we can see, obviously, it's a much different scenario than the easy level five. It's basically uh, a very easy task for the level tens. So our reward was five experience potions. We can see we've got a total of 12 experience potions here. So what we're going to do is we are first going to target our altruistic banker. Now leveling up from one to level 10 will cost one experience potion. Once you get to level 10, uh, you will be looking at uh, two experience potions all the way to level 20. So we're able to get uh, six levels here. So let's do three here and let's throw three into Bulldozer as well. Okay. Now we're gonna go back into the AI factory. We're going to give number four a simulation and just to see how much of an effect that that had. Okay, and we can see that already by having those uh, levels that it's making already a difference.
but I think the outcome will be the same when uh, both of the tanks expire here. That We'll jump back to level 3 and continuing just to get a few more levels there. Unless the little bulldozer can, uh, uh, I think, may be able to take this. We may get a slight edge on victory here. There we go. So that was just a simulation, so unfortunately no rewards. But we are going to do level 3 one more time, just to make sure, rather than waste the energy there. Now, as our content continues to grow forth, we will definitely be having guest speakers on uh, and co-hosts throughout the duration. And we're going to be deep diving into various strategies that other people are using, things that they would do differently, and basically getting a uh, really broad range from the community uh, and their experiences within uh, Gas Hero. Okay, so we see an easy uh, defeat here. Okay, so that gives us five experience potions to use. So we are going to use uh, those, let's say, primarily on we'll add two levels to this tank. We'll do one more level three, and then we'll retry a level four. So as we can see, the higher we level, the easier those levels are becoming. So we'll do two levels, three levels to Blessed Kid. And now we jump onto level four, and we're just going to go for it and have a go. Now, if you end up failing, uh, it doesn't burn your entire five energy. You will only lose one energy. Um, so if I lose the one energy here, that will bring me down to 10, so I'll still have uh, my two attempts there. So we can see that the outcome here, the tanks are staying alive much longer. Um, and the DPS are definitely doing their jobs there, so we'll definitely edge out of victory here. All right, so now instead of getting five uh, experience potions as a reward, now we get seven. So now we can jump in. Uh, we'll add one more to our tank here, and then we'll add two points to our healer. And we've just unlocked a skill, which is great. Um, there's a total of seven skills that can be unlocked uh, as you 
level up, uh, uh, obviously the higher amount of levels, the more chances you have at that skills uh, to unlock. Sometimes you don't get lucky, sometimes you do, but there's a lot of value in these, especially in the later levels. Uh, right, now we have one more to go. I'm going to do another level four. Now with the uh, added uh, levels to the healer, you can see that the tanks are staying uh, alive significantly longer. And the same uh, will be even more so once we uh, level up Truth Seeker a few times. Uh, right now, level four is becoming easy. So we've got seven potions left. We're going to level up three levels here. We've just unlocked uh, his weapon mastery. And three. Put one there because my OCD likes all the same numbers. So we've gone from level 10 for all of them to now level 13 for all. Uh, we do have only one energy left, so we won't be able to compete there. Um, every few days, the clan boss will unlock for the fight. As I explained earlier, the strongest participant will be able to take the clan leader. So uh, user 1300 dot 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 uh, was able to achieve 215 damage. Um, we get five challenges every, uh, every cycle, so we're going to give this a go. <laughs> and aim to beat uh, 215, which we've done just in the uh, the first attack there. Now this is a, a battle scenario where having multiple single target DPS comes in really handy and uh, some stun based utility heroes because you're able to stun that boss and prevent it from attacking while your uh, damaging abilities rack up the damage there all right so we have completed uh with a total damage done of 3780 and if we check back we have now got the first rank uh as it stands right now uh, with 13 hours left. So assuming nobody else joins this particular clan um, and, and beats out that, then it's a, a pretty good shoe-in for um, our, our first clan leadership on day one. Now, down the bottom left here, we have our map section, which will go up each level. So there are nine users in a clan, there are nine clans in a guild, and there are nine guilds in a district with two districts in a city. At the guild level, you'll have access to the guild auction house. Um, again, the, the smaller the clan or guild, the lesser items you will have showing in here. So um, this this is a very small auction house, so it has a uh, few and far between. Uh, one more level up, you have district that all of the guilds have access to. Um, this is still relatively low because it's a low population city. So um, occasionally you'll get new items pop up. You've also got the market, which is a built-in marketplace where users can sell their weapons, heroes, pets, uh, fragments, and various items that you can use for moving, breeding, uh, and creating other assets. Um, all right, I think that wraps up episode one, getting started. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to run episode two, which will likely include more experience potions. Uh, and then eventually episode three and four as we start to break down what assets we're going to target to replicate our teams and get ready for that next cycle. All right. See you guys next time.